Showtime! The Capital G Show starts right now. What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. So, guys, today I want to try out a new segment. I'm calling it Card Showdown, and you've probably seen something like this on other YouTubers' channels. Uh, this is basically where I take two similar cards, cards that can be played in a multitude of decks very similarly, uh, practically have a lot of the same purposes, and I compare and contrast them. Now, uh, to keep things fair, I try to pick cards that are generally going to be considered tech cards and coming out of the side deck. And I don't want to take a card's history you know, into consideration. I just want to talk about how good the card is right now in this format because I wouldn't want a card's legacy to be like a determining factor. And I'm not really going to say in the end which card is better but I guess you guys can ultimately decide which card works better for you because you know if you're playing Fire Fist, you know a card that works in your deck might not work as well as a deck like Mermil's. So in the end, I guess you can decide you know which card is better for you or which card you just like more. And you guys know how this pretty much goes. I mean, you guys pretty much drive this ship as to what videos I make. I mean, if this gets riveting reviews from you guys and you like the segment, then obviously I'll make more. The two cards that I am going to compare today are the End of Anubis and Vanity's Fiend. Um, Vanity's Fiend, you know, has always been a very heavily sided card in decks like Fog Monarchs. And the End of Anubis is a card that I think people are slowly catching on to. Okay, so... Uh, some of the categories I broke these cards down in, and I guess they'll change from time to time. You know, obviously they can't be exactly the same if I like start comparing traps. But um, stats-wise, uh, End of Anubis does have that extra 100 attack, and that can be relevant because not only does it get over all monarchs, but it gets over Lagia, and just having more attack is just always good if you have it for free. But Vanity's Fiend has the better overall stat line, and that's simply because. End of Anubis does have zero defense. Uh, that can be relevant as, you know, some Mermel players are starting to tech in copies of Econ. I know Joe uh, Garolando was doing that. Uh, you never know when you'll play against a, a Frog Monarch deck where they main Econs. And, you know, there's always a Karakuri Strategist, you know, where you can just summon Karakuri Strategist, put your guy in, uh, put your End of Anubis in defense mode. And, I mean, you don't want to lose your end of Anubis that you had to work so hard to get on the field to, you know, something stupid like a strategist. So that's always something to keep into consideration. Vanity's Fiend's 1200 defense isn't impressive, but it's damn sure better than zero. Uh, general drawbacks, Vanity's Fiend actually does have one. It can't be special summoned. Now, you know, I know that I said that in the past, you know, I didn't really think that was relevant. Doom Calibur, that's because he's a normal monster that you can just summon. But an attribute summon to where, you know, you have to exhaust resources to put them on the board. It is kind of nice to be able to monster born and end of Anubis that you had to work to get on the field. So, you know, the fact that it can't be special summon does uh, kind of hurt its playability. As far as the matchups go, and this is where uh, will probably be the de deciding factor as to which one of these cards you probably consider, uh, you know, better in your opinion. Um, Vanity's Fiend is absolute lockdown versus Mermil. I mean, they really just don't have many answers to it. You know, first off, the only way that they can get it off the board is if they have heavy infantry, but almost all of their discard outlets are, require, like, special summoning. You know what I mean? Like Abysteus and something like uh, Megalo. They can't even attempt to special summon those guys, so they're pretty much left with having to have Spike plus heavy infantry, and if they don't have that, then... I mean, they're fucked. They can't use Abyss Squall. They can't use Abyss Spear, Monster Born. They have no ways of getting over this card, so it is just absolute lockdown. The same thing goes for Frog Monarchs and all those variations of Lancer Frogs and whatnot. I mean, the only out that they have is Soul Exchange. I mean, they can enemy control it and put it in defense, but they don't have any monsters that can attack over it, so that's just an irrelevant play. I mean, at the end of Anubis is good against, you know, Mermil and Monarchs. It's not great. Uh, not only because, you know, both decks can potentially use Econ and then just run it over with anything. The End of Anubis does stop all water Atlantean effects. You know, it stops the Dragoons and the Marksmans and, you know, it stops Mermil Gundy and all of that. But they can still go Special Summon crazy. I mean, they can still use their Abyss Squall and make a one card, you know, Abyss Gyos and just attack over it. They can make Big Eye during the same play and just, you know, snatch still your monster. 
Against Monarchs, it's pretty much the same deal. You know, yes, End of Anubis does shut down the Treeborn and Ronin Totem plays, so your opponent won't have those, you know, tribute fodder options. However, there's always the risk that you can attack into a Gores, or you can attack into a really beefy Trigodia that are there that, you know, Vanity's Fiend would obviously prevent. Now, for some rogue matchups, uh, End of Anubis absolutely destroys Dark World. None of their effects trigger, which means, I mean, your opponent is just going to have a hard time speeding through their deck like they're used to. It's just not going to happen and the only way that they can really get over end of anubis is to pretty much get grapha in the graveyard and then normal summon and then bounce for the grapha but if you have something like a bottomless or a deep prison i mean they're pretty much sol any of these fiend absolutely destroys karakuri they don't have anything that's big enough to get over him they can't use their solar wind jammers their e teleports their instant fusion none of those cards and uh you know they do both have rogue matchups that they're really strong against um, the one last thing that I'll wrap up and I'll say this is, you know, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but those macro engine decks that are starting to be really popular, some of those guys are starting to uh, side deck the end of Anubis. And what I like about this is, in this specific deck, it doesn't limit your offensive options because, you know, almost certainly you're going to tribute for DD Survivor to summon the end of Anubis just in case, you know, your opponent does get rid of your macro or something like that. You have another way of stopping those Mermail players. And it doesn't really hurt your offense at all because, you know, Survivor activates and removed from game. Uh, you know, in comparison, Vanity's Fiend, when you summon it in just about any deck, you know, whether that be Mermil or Monarchs, you pretty much can't commit much to the board after it. I mean, he stops you pretty much from committing any other monsters. So even if you were siding Vanity's Fiend in a deck like Macro, you know, it not only would it prevent your Survivor from coming back, but you really wouldn't be able to commit much on the board either so as you guys can see two cards that are very different but actually work well against the same decks frog monarchs and mermil pretty much any deck that runs off of water monsters they both have rogue matchups that they absolutely trash uh, both cards have some limitations and drawbacks, but you know, they do offer their own benefits I think it just boils down to what deck you're running and you know your play style what you're more comfortable with I mean uh, Vanity Fiend seems like a more guaranteed lockdown But you know the offensive options seem a little better with the end of Anubis You also get a little bit of better stats But those stats can be a liability because of its zero defense So let me know what you guys think uh, Hopefully you enjoyed the video Maybe I'll make another one of these soon Take care and thank you for watching Subscribing makes life happy